I'll tell you what, you take these 10 tips that we talked about today and implement them in every single game for the next week or two, and I promise you, you're going to see an exponential increase in your personal results. Hey, what it do, what it do, what it do, it's your boy Q. And welcome back to YouTube, Fog Dwellers. Look, I'm excited for this one. I know with the release of the new Resident Evil chapter and all the hype around it, we've got quite a few new players coming into the Fog, or even got some players coming back after taking themselves a little bit of a hiatus. And as somebody who really only started playing the game heavy last year, I understand that it can feel a little overwhelming, especially when playing with some of your friends or maybe your favorite content creator who's doing open lobbies and they've got a couple hundred or even a couple thousand hours in the game, you might feel like you're bringing the team down, but in reality, you're just learning. And honestly, there's a lot of things that you can do over the course of this next week in your games that's gonna really like exponentially increase your skill level. So let's go ahead and talk about them. Now, some of these tips are gonna seem maybe a little basic and might seem like they like are well known and as someone who queues a lot in red ranks over on my channel on Twitch, which as always link for that is going to be down in the description below. I can tell you that even like in red ranks, we see quite a few players who aren't following a lot of these tips. Okay. But before we get started, if you could do me a favor, check and see if you're subscribed. There's a lot of y'all who've been checking out these videos that we've been releasing recently that aren't. And we are trying to chase down that 1000 subs by the end of the year. So It'd really mean a lot to me if you could smack that subscribe button. Plus, if you turn on those notifications, we can make sure to catch you right back here for the next video as we continue to drop like two to three of these Dead by Daylight videos on YouTube every single week. Now, look, first and foremost, we've got to talk about the most basic of basic of basic tips, which is to make sure that you're always doing something. If you aren't running the killer or unhooking or healing teammates or cleansing totems, like just get on a gen. Seriously, like that's the main objective. You have 400 seconds of gen work to do in a game. That's literally 100 seconds of gen work per player for the four person team. So this means like stop hiding the second that you hear a heartbeat and let's get to some of that work. Again, it's only 400 seconds of work. So if they do happen to come your way and that's your time to practice those loops and take the killer on a little run, otherwise commit to that gen and get your work done. Cool. Now, tip number two is going to seem a little contradictory, so let's talk about it, and that is going to be to spread out. Look, if all of y'all spawn on a gen and want to see if you can pump out like that very first gen while you're all together, whether it be with Prove Thyself or not, that's one thing. But realistically, as the game continues to progress, you're going to be much more effective by spreading out. You have to realize that Dead by Daylight is basically a big old game of tug of war. And when the game starts, there's all these resources like pallets and things like that around the map. And the killer is going to try and prevent the survivors from getting the generators done. It's just a big tug of war between who can create more pressure on the other team. And so if you happen to have multiple people working on a generator and then a killer happens to chase one of your teammates up onto you guys, let's say there's two of y'all working on a gen, one person getting chased, two of y'all run away from said gen. That means now three of the four players in the game are doing nothing to contribute to that 400 seconds worth of work that needs to get done in order to leave the exit gate, especially if they're running ruin. Which brings us to number three, like stop trying to do generators through hex ruin. Like maybe you can get lucky every once in a while and have a teammate or two get a killer to commit over 80 seconds worth of time away from you so you can get a single generator done. But we've all been there through this scenario. You've got a generator just about done. Maybe you're at like 90, 95%. And then all of a sudden the killer shows up, hunts you down, puts you on a hook. And at tier three, even a generator that is at 99%, it takes two minutes and it will be regressed all the way back to zero. And that's all of that time wasted. So stop wasting your time on a gen. If the four of you guys separate, once you realize that there's ruin and basically take care of a different corner of the map, it's gonna take so little of time to find that ruin, break it, and then the killer's just a three perk killer. You can give yourself a little bit of a head start with this too. When you get to your very first generator of the game, just give it a little tap. When you let go of it, if you happen to see the sparks and see the ruin, 
you know you got to get to hunting. And while we're talking about ruin, let's go ahead and talk about tip number four, which is to make sure you're always looking for totems. Look, I know, I know I'm a part of two of the biggest Facebook Dead by Daylight groups there are and why I constantly see people talking about how much they hate Noed. You really hate a Noed killer? Do totems. It's that simple. There's only five of them on a map. And like start taking mental notes with some of the common spawns for said totems. Like in your TNL walls, you generally have where there are the two barrels that are standing next to each other, and a totem often spawns in between them. Or in that little nook behind where totems like to spawn inside of your jungle gyms, totems like to also spawn there, or in shack. Or, you know, sometimes there are going to be more map-specific ones, which are going to take longer to learn. But if you start taking mental notes of where all of these totem spawns are, it's also going to make number three of hunting down that ruin that much quicker. You see what I'm saying? And I'll tell you what, there's nothing more rewarding than seeing a killer deflate because they get to end game and they don't see that their no ed activates <laughs> because you already cleansed all the totems. So go ahead and get to hunting. Cool. And for our fifth tip, we're going to talk about watching your generator spread. Kind of keep track of seeing where the generators are that get done, whether it be when they pop or you can also look in the sky and you can see like the little lights coming from the top of the generators to show you that they're on. If you see that generators are close together, especially sometimes you'll see them like in a corner where you have one that's really far back in a corner and then one that's a little bit more central, try and knock out those more center gens first. That's actually why personally I always try and knock out the centermost gen early because if you can split up your map, it's going to make your generator spread for those last three gens very far, making your chances of getting out exponentially higher. We've all been in a situation where we get to end game and we're in a really bad three gen situation because our teammates rushed to the very first gens that they saw and cranked those out instead of paying attention to how they could strategically knock out those gens and help us get out of the game even better. Now for tip number six, we're going to talk about avoiding being too altruistic, which might kind of sound weird, but I want you to hear me out here. If you continue to go for unhooks and saves and see that there's everybody else on the team that's going for the same save, you see everyone going for unhooks, everyone's trying to heal the person that's coming off of those hooks, then it's time for us to realign ourselves and make sure that we're the ones sticking to generators, working on those 400 seconds of gen repair that it takes in order to power the exit gates. Because if everyone's going for the unhook, no one is getting the objective done. If you do happen to go for the unhook though and the killer starts chasing you, let's talk about tip number seven. Turn around and go the opposite way, okay? For the love of God, stop looping the killer right next to the hook. These are the type of plays that are going to make those killers end up turning right around and re-downing the person that just came off of a hook. These are cases of what we call survivor-induced tunneling. It's almost as bad as unhooking a player right in front of a killer. Even if you have BT, you're just asking for your teammate to get tunneled, which does indeed lead us to tip number eight, which is really a two-parter. First off, <laughs> stop farming your teammates off hook, okay? Whether you have BT or not, do not unhook within the first five seconds and that player gets put on a hook. It makes zero sense and all you're asking for the killer to do is exactly what you don't want them to do, which is go after the person who just got off of the hook. Like, let's think about this for a second. If a killer puts somebody on a hook and turns around and goes to look for one of the three survivors left on a map, and then five seconds later they hear the unhooking sound coming from behind them, they know that two of the four survivors that are on the map right now are right behind them. Why would they go scurrying the rest of the map looking for people when they have no idea where that location is? And if the killer does happen to come back for the unhook, for the love of everything, please take aggro. You can extend a chase even if it's just for 20-25 seconds by holding simply shift W and extend the chase, allow your friend who just got unhooked to find safety, as well as to possibly and hopefully get a heal. You're also not doing yourself any favors when it comes to your blood points or your pips in order to rank up by continuing to get unsafe unhooks and you're not able to get those heals off as well. And while we're talking about taking aggro and holding chase, which you're only going to get better in looping and, and chases by performing more loops and getting in more chases, right? Just like we talked about in our last video. But let's talk about tip number nine. It's another two-parter for y'all. Stop camping at pallets and trying to get the stun on the killer. <laughs> Look, I understand if you've been over on our channel on Twitch, you know how much we love to do it. And I understand how satisfying that feels. But by camping at the pallet, you're generally sacrificing one, two, sometimes three more loops around the particular tile before you had to smack them with a pallet, or at least before you had to drop the pallet, 
which one is costly time and two is a precious resource. Stop wasting your pallets the very second that you see them. Remember, when you spawn into a map at the beginning of the game, there are only so many pallets in a particular map that are going to spawn. So stop wasting all of your resources on the very first or second chase that you take in the game. Especially God Pallet. We all know a person or two on our teams that likes to make sure that they waste God Pallet or four or five gens instead of just simply taking their very first hook of the game. I promise you, some of those very precious resources like the God and Very Safe Pallets, just leave them for the end. You're going to want those time wasters then versus just simply taking your very first hook of the game. And for tip number 10, it's not going to be something that just applies to being a better teammate, but something that really applies to most of anything in life. And that's if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Nobody finding ruin, go out and find it. Nobody getting saves, go time to be the medic. Nobody able to keep aggro from the killer and they keep going down in 15 or 20 seconds? Well, it's time to lace them shoes up and go for some fun runs in the fog. I'll tell you what, you take these 10 tips that we talked about today and implement them in every single game for the next week or two, and I promise you, you're going to see an exponential increase in your personal results. Take that, plus add in our blood point grinding build that we talked about a week and a half, especially during the five-year anniversary event that went live today. And you're going to see a big increase in those blood point results. And you're also going to see yourself catching an extra pip or two. But if you found the video useful, or maybe you're a veteran player and knew most of these tips and tricks, but think that it could help some newer players, do me a huge favor if you could. Leave a like and a comment. That's going to help us out with that good old YouTube algorithm. Maybe leave me a comment below with some other tips and tricks that you think could go along with this list here. And again, we're on that chase for a thousand subs here on YouTube by the end of the year. So. One last huge favor I'd like to ask if you could hook your boy up, hit that subscribe button. It would honestly mean the world to me. And if you turn those notifications on, we can catch you right back here when we drop future videos, which we're going to continue to do two to three times a week. Cool? Till our next video, though, for real, with everything crazy going on in the world today, be true, be you, be sincere, game hard and love harder. It's your boy Q, signing out.